Good morning, Cedar Park High School. It's Monday, January 27th, and it's a B-Day. I'm Ellen Neal. And I'm Evan Vines. We're back with the new and improved Wolfcast for 2020. On today's show, Luke Johnson tells us about Cedar Park's student who may have saved a family's life during a house fire. We're also highlighting a student heading off to All-State Choir, plus some details on an all-new soccer season. A sports report and your pet of the week. Turn it up because the Wolfcast starts now. If you're in a fire, what would be the first thing you grab? If I was in a house fire, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'd probably grab my family first. Yeah. Right? Check on and them. then I'd probably grab any of like the valuables that I actually yeah. need, mm -hmm. like a passport or like the credit cards, like mm -hmm. things that's like hard to get back. Yeah. So like a uh, yeah, that's probably what I get. But a CPHS student was tasked with just that when his home went up in flames while he and his family were inside. Luke Johnson has more. Junior Anders Townsley told me how he and his family were able to escape what could have been a much worse tragedy over the break. You can't plan for a fire, so when tragedy strikes it can be a terrifying sight to see, nonetheless to be in the thick of. Well, uh, at first it looked like a scene out of a scary movie, so I looked over at Landon and I was like, hey look at this. And then I, it actually hit me that it was a fire, so then I like got rushed with panic and ran downstairs made sure that I could get my family up. Landon Barry, also a junior, described the moment the two realized things were not okay. This experience for me was, you know, pretty crazy. I've never expected to wake up at a friend's house with the whole roof burning and overall very crazy. With limited time before total destruction, Anders had his priorities straight, saving the most important things before it was too late. We got our dogs out and uh, I got like my keys and my phone and wallet and everything, but we pretty much left without anything. Anders' family will lease a house in Twin Creeks for a year until the destroyed one is rebuilt. We're all rooting for you, Anders. 2020 has begun and with a new year comes beginning for spring sports. Soccer season is in full swing and the Lady Teals are ready to dominate the field. Seniors Bella Granada and Karina Whitman say they are planning on making their last season one to put into the books. I feel great. I'm hyped. I'm ready for a state championship already. Senior year. Senior we're ready. Year. We're looking forward to hopefully winning district. We want to go far in the playoffs. We're excited for state, even though we're not there yet, but <laughs> that's where we want to be. That's where so. we want to be. <laughs> Our team chemistry is very good, and with preseason so far, we've just only been getting better. Head over to our Insta story at CPHS News for a full schedule of the season's boys and girls games. A select group of CPHS choir students will be heading off to UIL Allstate. Junior Cadence Lehaw and seniors Ryan Swicky, Lindsay Dove, Emma Vaughn, and Allie McEwen are the five students to make it to the fifth and final round of the statewide competition, where they will now perform with the other Allstaters from around Texas at TMEA in February. Junior Cadence Lehaw tells CPHS News about his journey in this competition, this being his third year making the Allstate Choir. Yeah, I think it uh, requires a lot of work. Uh, I know, especially for choir, like the teachers kind of recognize this. So every den, uh, they had a specific rehearsal that uh, 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 people who were auditioning could go to and they could uh, just practice their music with the teachers and get feedback that way. And then on Fridays, we did group ones all together to kind of get a, a feel for how everything sounded. And it's also encouraged that uh, people take outside or in school private lessons uh, just so they can really get working on perfecting this music because uh, the competition is hard from the beginning and it only gets harder, especially at area when you're facing against the top people from uh, San Antonio, Dallas, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I think there's really a lot that goes into this competition. Make sure to congratulate these five if you see them. And coming up next, we have the top three things you need to know today, a sports report and a new pet of the week. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Smoky Moe's Barbecue, the best barbecue that money can buy. Proudly supporting Cedar Park High School. Good morning, CPHS. I'm Abby Martinez, and here are the top three things you need to know today. 
First, NBA player Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna were both killed in a helicopter crash yesterday. Nine people total were killed in this crash in Calabasas, California. Tributes are being made in many different ways, including Kobe's jersey being spotlighted at the Grammys in the Staples Center last night. Next, the Center for Disease Control has confirmed a fifth case of the coronavirus that broke out in China this month. There has been no evidence, though, that the cases were transmitted person to person. All patients with the disease are isolated in hospitals and have recently traveled to China. And lastly, the 2020 Grammys held on Sunday, many things happened. Billie Eilish took home the awards for Best New Artist, Song of the Year, Album of the Year, and Record of the Year. Many tributes by different artists were also made to Kobe Bryant. And Demi Lovato came back for a performance after her overdose in late July. Late rapper Nipsey Hussle was also awarded a posthumous Grammy for Best Rap Performance. Oh, absolutely devastating what is happening I, to the Bryant family. It's so sad. I, I couldn't, like, believe it. I couldn't either. Like, yeah, I was watching CNN the other day, and then um, they mentioned it's it's going to be like, where were you when Kobe Bryant died? It's just like, it's yeah. that, that feeling and, mm -hmm. like, that feeling you get when you when you learn about it. You'll yeah. know that that will be with you forever, and, and his memory will last for yeah. so long. And so. his daughters, right? Yeah. Yes, it's definitely, GG. terrible. It's just so hard so. because, like, you know, like, what was their conversation? Like, as mm -hmm. and, like yeah. and, like, as a dad, like, what can you do? Like, you can't, it's, you can't control that. Like, yeah, it's just, like, it's just almost fate at that point. Really Thank you, Abby. We now throw it over to Addie Bates for what's been going on in T-Wolf Sports. Addie? Thanks, Evan. Before we get into the sports report, we wanted to take a moment to pay tribute to sports legend Kobe Bryant. As we mentioned in three things, the Lakers legend and his daughter Gianna died in a Sunday in a helicopter crash in Calabasas, California. Bryant was 41 and his daughter only 13, both among nine dead in the crash that was headed to Gianna's basketball game Sunday afternoon. Bryant's death comes to a shock to not only the sports industry, but to people all around the world. Tweets and condolences have been pouring in since the accident from celebrities including former teammate Shaquille O'Neal, former Lakers player Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and many more. For, to Kobe's family, I, I want to send my most sincere and heartfelt uh, regrets and prayers, and my thoughts are with you guys. Bryant won five NBA titles with the Lakers, along with two Olympic gold medals. He's currently fourth on the NBA all-time scoring list with 33,643 points. Now let's get into some T-Wolf sports. First, after starting off the new year with a four-game win streak, boys basketball unfortunately lost to Connolly High School last Friday. Now this was one of the closest games of the season, with the boys only being defeated 45-43. to No need to worry, however, because the boys will take on Glenn tomorrow here at home starting at 7. Moving on to girls basketball, the girls have been dominating since the start of 2020, posting a 6-0 record so far this year. On Friday, the girls also faced Connolly and took home the win with the final score being 62-49. Moving on to bowling, the team faced the bye last Friday and came home with the win. The team is now 4-1 on the season. Their next match will be this Friday versus Vista Ridge starting at 5-30. Now on to boys soccer, the team faced Maynard High School this Friday and tied the Mustangs 1-1. This puts their record at 5-5-1 five and five and one on the season. The boys will take on the Glen Grizzlies tomorrow at Glen starting at 7-15. Lastly, girls soccer faced Liberty Hill on Friday and came home with the win going 2-0. This extends their record to 4-3 on the season. The girls will face Glen here at home tomorrow starting at 7-15. That's all I have for y'all today. I'll be back on Friday with another sports report and a new segment, Addy Attempts, where I find out exactly what it takes to sign up for the basketball team. I'll see you then with CPHS News. I'm Addie Bates. Back to y'all at the desk. Thanks, Addie. I can't wait to see if you make the team. We'll be right back with Pet of the Week, but first, today's announcements. Before we go, it's time for your Pet of the Week. This is Kate Newman's adorable three-year-old dog, Willie Nelson Newman. He enjoys going outside and pretending to use the bathroom so he, that he can come back inside and get a treat. Willie can be a bit uncomfortable in public, but would never think to hurt a human. He loves to snuggle in his bed and gets tired easily, even though he still likes playing around. Two important announcements before we go. Tomorrow, there will be a quick senior meeting at the beginning of second, second period. All seniors need to be present. The meeting should only take 20 to 30 minutes. And on Thursday, we will run a pep rally schedule, then after second period, for a voter registration rally. This pep rally will only be for juniors and seniors to bring excitement and awareness about the importance 
importance of exercising the right to vote. Well, today was a big show. It's our first show back for, yes, uh, for, the for new 2020, semester. new show mm -hmm. for 2020. Had a lot we of had, content today. It yeah. did. We had a lot, of, a lot of heavy yes, content exactly. about Kobe Bryant. And, uh, but we're looking forward to uh, uh, a new year, and uh, we have more segments so, yeah, on Yeah, new show segments now. coming up. Um, yeah. In case you didn't know, we have a TikTok of the week. Uh, mm -hmm. which is really, really cool. We, in case anyone wants to send in their TikTok uh, to CPHS News, they can go on our Instagram or our mm -hmm. Twitter to find the links for that. Send it to us. We're going to put it on the Wolfcast on Thursday, so definitely send those in. Definitely. Um, that's all we have for today. Remember, you can catch anything you missed on the Wolfcast on our YouTube channel. Just search CPHS News. And we'll be back tomorrow with a story on the retirement of the Leander ISD's first female principal, details on upcoming fine arts wing construction. And our brand new segment, Scholarship of the Week. With CPHS News, I'm Ellen Neal. I'm Maddie Bates. I'm Abby Martinez. And I'm Evan Vines. Remember to make it a great day or not, the choice is yours. Have a phenomenal day, Cedar Park.